the same plan with just one to three millimeter of initial bone height, I recommend that patient not to wear any denture. And the patient said, are you crazy? I need my denture today. But I know that as soon as patient wears denture, this implant that I worked so hard to stabilize will go, in, go, go up to the sinus. Just like this case, patient wore a denture and implant was found under the orbit one week later. So I highly recommend the patient to be out of uh, denture, but he said, no way. I need my denture today. So what I have done is I utilized just any uh, mini implant. Uh, fortunately, patient had a tori, maxillary tori, and I put two implants on the front, and that was the beginning of my uh, journey in palatal implant stabilization. Uh, and I have relined his denture to uh, uh, my uh, mini implants, and patient walked out with the denture on the same day. Fortunately, everything went okay, but there was two disadvantage the system. Because only FDA approved mini implant is at least 10 millimeter in length, actually the implant came out through the nasal mucosa. It was too long. But because it was a temporary, it was acceptable because I was, plan I was planning to remove the implant. Number two, the attachment that I had was a ball ring attachment. Because it is a ball ring attachment, every time patients swallow at night, because I instructed the patient to remove the denture, he bothered the tongue and the tongue had an indentation. Every time he swallowed, the tongue was pushing on this implant and it really made the tongue very, very uncomfortable. So. Without this implant, I don't think this, this uh, permanent implant would have been integrated successfully. Uh, but because they held in place and retained the denture, uh, we were able to restore all the implants and patients were very happy. With help of uh, my mentor, Dr. Park, uh, we are proud to announce that we have uh, finally developed palatal denture stabilizer. I would like to talk about my palatal denture stabilizer because it plays a big role in my practice, especially when I do extraction and when I try to deliver immediate denture. You know how sometimes that immediate denture does not fit? But by putting three or four uh, palatal implants, we're able to uh, stabilize any uh, denture that is loose. So as you can see from this video, every time we make, uh, we do a full mouth implant, we will grind the buccal flange, especially when we do GBR, and because we don't want that unwanted force on the, on, on the uh, buccal wall, and because we remove the buccal wall, buccal flange, it is difficult to stabilize the implant. Uh, it's difficult to stabilize the denture, and by using this palatal uh, stabilizer, we're able to always obtain excellent initial stability. So let me go into detail in terms of how we can utilize this palatal uh, denture stabilizer. First, I highly recommend CT scan because everybody has a different morphology of palate. So we, you want to find the thickest area of the bone because more bone to implant contact you have, it will be more favorable for your patients. According to this study in, uh, published in Orthodontic Journal, the, the squares that are in white color, they found the most amount of bone, greater than six millimeter of bone height. So I recommend you to go into pre-maxillary region in order to engage maximum amount of bone. Uh, however, in this article, they, they do mention that there is great uh, uh, variability, inter-patient variability, and they also recommend individual CT scan in order to uh, apply uh, this concept. But if you do not have a CT scan available, I recommend you to go between the canine and the first bicuspid region. So let me talk about surgical procedure. Uh, obviously, we, we do want to take a CT scan. 
to find the maximum amount of bone volume to be able to stabilize this implant. So this is my uh, CT scan here on your left. And after we take a CT scan, uh, you want to place this implant where you have the maximum amount of bone volume. But before I actually talk about surgical technique, uh, the characteristic of this implant uh, is very critical. And I would like to go into detail in terms of uh, the characteristic of this implant. Just like any ridge, initial stability is a must. So we have made taper design with knife thread so that we can maximize uh, initial stability and also increase bone to implant contact. Uh, in fact, this typical size that I use is three millimeter in diameter, five millimeter in length. The surface area of this three by five millimeter implant is exactly the same as a regular implant diameter of four millimeter and seven millimeter in length. So in terms of surface area, even though it's a small implant, because of knife thread design, it maximizes the surface area. Number two, because it is very pointy, 90% of the time you do not require any drilling. All you need to do is just simply screw in and surgical technique is very simple. We know that palate is completely keratinized tissue, therefore no incision is required. All you need to do is uh, drill it in. Very, very simple surgical technique. However, the gum height varies greatly from individual to individual. It varies anywhere from two millimeter all the way to 12 millimeter. So, you need to find the right location. In my experience, if patient presents with very high vault, it is very difficult to put lots of implants because th th uh, thickness of tissue is very, very great. Uh, if patient has a very high vault, I recommend just two implants uh, because uh, it's very, very difficult to put a lot of implants. But if patient has a very low vault, number one, retention is not very good on the existing denture and you have more than enough available pallet in order to place four implants, so I recommend four pallets, four palatal implants if you have a very low vault. And in order to overcome this problem, we have developed many different height of a gingival uh, gum height. And as I have mentioned, the attachment is very critical because the tongue will be very discomfortable if the attachment is very sharp. So what we, what we have developed is very low profile, yet very, very highly retentive uh, head design of the implant. So typically, you want to place about two to four implants on the palate in order to stabilize. And I like to avoid the midline because on the midline, uh, there is a lot of connective tissue. So at, once again, you want to utilize the T-ruler um, in order to guide you in the surgery uh, so that you know where the maximum amount of bone volume exists. And we typically put this T-bar uh, over the incisive foramen to guide us over the uh, midline so that you know where maximum amount of bone volume exists. Once again, this is an average amount of bone volume found in Korean, 20 Korean uh, population. Uh, so if you're Caucasian, uh, you, there will be a little bit more variation. This is also another very critical article that I want to mention. Not only is the bone volume very critical, bone density is also very critical, right? If you have a high density bone, you will achieve very excellent initial stability. And a lot of orthodontists did a lot of uh, uh, research in this area. And, and in this article, you can see that more anterior we come, uh, there is higher uh, density of the cortical bone versus more posterior you go, there is less density. Uh, but but when, if you do not get excellent initial stability on the posterior, do not worry. Just simply take it out, put the rescue implant, which is 3.5 millimeter in diameter, or simply choose another location to put additional implant. So 
because everybody has different height of gingival gum height, uh, what we have done is we put a kit together for you so that you don't have to uh, have a headache of choosing which implants. Uh, because every patient is different. We have put about 20 implants together, uh, 3.0 millimeter on the top and 3.5 millimeter on the bottom. And it also comes in different retentive caps. Uh, personally, I like to use black color because it is the most uh, less retentive. And if you put the implants exactly parallel, uh, you will probably use yellow color because uh, when the implants are pretty parallel, you will, you, you, you will not have as much retention compared to if you have two unparalleled implants, uh, you will have more retention. So in those cases, you will need to use uh, least uh, retentive cap, which is black. So looking at the CT scan, please find the thickest area of the bone. And we like to use the T ruler to guide us where to put this uh, palatal implants. And I will use periodontal probe to measure the gum thickness so that my assistant can uh, select the implant size according to the gum thickness. And if you don't have a CT scan, please use this article to uh, find the thickest area of the bone. I personally do not drill, but if you have a patient who has a maxillary tori or very dense bone, I recommend you to uh, drill it. As you can see on your right, uh, it could be very easily self-driven uh, without any drilling. And once again, do not put the implant on exactly midline because uh, those are the area that uh, has the connected tissue and uh, you, uh, you will have a delayed failure if you put it on the midline. So a little bit off angle is uh, recommended. Uh, I usually use existing denture the patient has, and we will uh, reline chair side in order to uh, make this more retentive for the patient. So very simple procedure. Uh, let me summarize. I know you guys are very hungry, so let me summarize my key points. Uh, number one, find the thickest bone volume through a CT scan, and if possible, try to do bicortical fixation. Number two, choose appropriate gingival thickness so that, so the implant does not stick out too much. If the implant is sticking out too much, then it will be impossible to remove the denture once you reline chair side because of undercut. Uh, undercut will prevent the uh, uh, reline material to give. So please submerge the implant completely under the gingiva. And if the, if the implant is uh, submerged too deep, uh, Two weeks later, you will not find the implant. So please uh, choose the appropriate gum height. Number three, denture should be fairly accurate. It should not be uh, very mobile because these implants are very small uh, and this implant only helps in retention, not to support the whole maxilla, but just for the retention. So you need, I call this implant assisted denture. It's not implant supported. So, so accurate. Uh, impression and accurate denture is very important so that you don't overload uh, this small uh, mini implant. These are only f to increase, increase the retention value and it's not to support and it's not to uh, bear the uh, occlusal force. And if you do not have a lot of uh, good stability, consider using 3.5 millimeter implant as a rescue implant and always try to uh, put the implant far apart as possible in order to get the tripod uh, effect. Now, our palatal stabilizer has uh, many benefits. Once again, it's a knife threaded design to resist the lateral force and increase the bone to implant contact. It has a very low profile so that the patient has an excellent comfort and it is a self-tapping, which means surgery is super, super easy. All you need to do is just screw in. And if you have a lot of resistance, I recommend uh, going counterclockwise and clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise in order to uh, self-engage. Uh, if you have a lot of resistance, uh, especially in male patient with very dense bone, I recommend uh, taking, out, taking out the implant and 
pre-drilling with 1.4 millimeter twist drill, which is in the kit uh, for the 3.0 implant, and 2.0 drill for the 3.5 millimeter implant. So if you want happy patients, I think minimally invasive approach is, is the way to, to do. And this is a patient that we, we ah, line. She had a very loose denture. Yeah, she said uh, even her boyfriend will be very happy. But I did not charge for the boyfriend. 